Good afternoon, Maria back with another video. It is 1.40 p.m. It is June 11th. It is Tuesday afternoon and I'm sitting here on my bed thinking about how in the world do I shake up my routine. I would like to say that I'm actually pretty burned out, okay? Because of all of the flip-flopping, me talking about making videos, repetitive um, topics of conversation, same old thing, same, same, same old, same old, same old. And I just get really burnt out on the whole subject. And today I had to be honest with myself. It's like, okay, you know what I need to do? I need to just step back and take a break. Like, cause I've been working on three different projects at one time, you know, I had mentioned um, the content that I'm trying, I'm making right now. And then I'm also having to, because I'm consistent. Okay. Regardless of what's going on with Patreon, I still want to put out my third quarter newsletter which is important to me and I'm working on videos and I'm doing a bunch of things when it comes to attempting to change maybe I might eliminate my logo incorporate the logo merge it with something else I'm just doing a bunch of stuff at one time and I will tell you that it gets um I just start getting kind of like burned out you know what I mean burned out why because there's so much to do and the reason why I'm constantly having to redouble my efforts and I'm like, okay, the reason why you have to redouble your efforts, Maria, is because of, we all know why, okay? And so this is the issue that keeps draining me. And it's just like, pisses me off. It makes me angry. But the reality of it is people like me have to keep going. We don't have time to constantly deal with people who deliberately try to thwart our plans. Why? Because this is a matter of survival. We don't have any other choice. So you have to keep moving forward, okay? And regard, maybe, I, I often wonder, you know, the reason why I look at this as a hate crime is because somebody should have known better. Like, you don't do that sort of stuff. You do not, you don't play that sort of stuff. It's not funny, it's not a game. You're playing with somebody's life, okay? But like I had said in my video, um, yesterday's video, I was talking about, you know, the sort of the interaction that I've had with some of these celebrities. And I'm gonna tell you, um, you know, I think some of these people may have, some of these people, okay, may have been victims of human trafficking their entire life. So they do not have any idea of ethics morals um what is proper what's considered proper and what is considered improper especially like when you meet them for the first time some of these people literally do not have a clue and so a lot of people think you know uh, are under the uh, impression that and i'm not you know i i i obviously have uh celebrities in my soul tribe okay and i'm and there's going to be some that are going to be supportive and i do appreciate the support but i know that i was attacked by some people in the celebrity soul tribe um because they didn't like me for whatever reason okay so these particular people that i did encounter some of the things that they would say i mean it would blow a lot of people away when they hear the 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 mentality that that comes through okay but um, like I said, you know, I am getting tired of that conversation and it is very draining because um, it, it just is. It's shocking. It's disturbing. It's like, oh my God, what the hell? But still, I want to move on. So anyway, um, this message is really, this whole entire video um, was kind of like a concept video. Why? Because I kept thinking, there's a bunch of what ifs in my head. Like, what if I wasn't working on content because right now, like I said, I'm taking a break from content. At least maybe for an hour might be the rest of the day and then I might be refreshed tomorrow, okay? Right now, this whole subject matter, you know, even me as myself right now, I'm just boring the, myself to death, okay? So I'm like, okay, what else would you do if I had the opportunity to? And I'm thinking, okay, wouldn't it be kind of cool if, you know, I knew people? And I don't know people anymore because, like I said, I cut a bunch of people off, okay? Um, I think if I did know somebody, I would probably invite them over for a cup of tea, some conversation, okay? And that's the kind of relationships that I choose to have, you know, like real friendships, talking, you know, being being a confidant that sort of thing okay um so anyway and no i mean i don't know capricorn 9 very well but for whatever reason she popped in my head so i know that I, she and i had you know some issues that we were talking about and she understands some of the things that i've been going through so okay i'm like okay let's pretend 
that I'm inviting some women over. Okay, so um, right now I think I would probably spend most of my time in a tea conversation with Capricorn 9. What would we be talking about? Hmm. Okay, obviously I think I would be talking to her about CB Berganza. Okay, and I think that she likes <laughs> the stories of CB Berganza as I'm talking about it. I think it's because it is very interesting. Last night I made a video about um, about CB Berganza. Okay. Because, you know, on my free time, I've been kind of doing some research on because I do love this person. I love this person because I can see so much of myself in him. Okay, I can see my, you know, how I, I've described how I have always felt like I was running. I always felt like I was running away from something that was harming me, harassing me, disturbing me, causing me frustration out of the blue or whatever that nervousness but not knowing exactly where it was coming from and when I read about the things that CB Berganza did I see it I'm like oh my god you know when we think about the connection of who we are now to our past lives it is so so amazing but yeah I mean my hobbies my interests my realization of certain things that I've learned in this life as Maria Gordon I keep thinking man if only I would have known this when I was CB Berganza you know what I mean I'm constantly going back and forth like me and CB Berganza are like and, and, and don't get me wrong I do understand his real name is Prince Alamehu I get that okay but and I know that perhaps maybe the name CB Berganza was meant to be maybe mock him in some way but what I actually see is a person who had a lot of character and a lot of strength, okay, regardless of the obstacles that he felt, okay, and I also admire his ability to uh, still be focused on what it was that he needed to do, okay. There are some people who wonder, Maria, why is it that you constantly keep you know, um, bringing up the issue? Because there's a lot of people, I know there's a lot of people who went out of their way to squash me, okay, and these are the same people who uh, made it so that I could not that literally descended upon me in the nine to five world Okay, meaning like I moved here to this community and my goal was to like raise my son minding my own business No understanding of me being Prince Alamehu no understanding of the experiment none of that Okay, so they started like, you know manipulating my employment moving me here mobbing me there whatever causing me nightmares, right? So I, I had no idea right so I got sucked into something okay and a lot of ways, of course, Prince Alame, who was sucked into something, he was like, you know, abducted. And then from then on, I think people realized that this man was a very special man. Um, the little articles that I do read on him, there's always somebody kind of like, you know, saying some sort of side or, or some sort of like, you know, twisted knife kind of comment, trying to discredit him a lot of times, okay? A lot of discred discreditation. But I'm telling you right now, I am the reincarnation of Prince Alamehu, who lived as C.B. Berganza. And no, this man was not bullshit. He was not bullshit at all. These people knew exactly what the kind of power and the strength that he had. And this is a reason why they were constantly dumping on him. Okay, he had a very difficult life. And I, too, had a very difficult life. You know, um, it's been very difficult for me. And when I think about, you know, the whole fake family and everything, it's very shattering. Okay, but to me, it's all a continuation of the pain that C.B. Berganza you know live through um I, I i do think it's very cool um so what are, the message i'm getting from you capricorn nine is that you wanted me to kind of go more into um defining what is or who is the discontented the discontented could be anybody who is of course not happy with their level of existence which there's a lot of people who aren't okay some of it is quite apparent some people you can just look at them and they you can tell that they just given up on life okay and um i think you know even people who who are very balanced at one point in their life they must have been at the level of being in i think everybody has been at that level of being discontented at some point in their life okay i will tell you that I, there's a certain level of me who's di discontented i'm discontented with my um situation that I had that was beyond my control okay but some people are discontented with their choices that they've made in life and so they kind of built their own prison but the only problem with it is is that some people have been believing something that wasn't true a narrative it could have been something that was 
in, in, encouraged by their mother. It could have been something that was encouraged through their environment. It could, and and a lot of it is the the general propaganda, the ideal lifestyle, people chasing after dreams. That really, when you dissect them and look at them a little bit closer under the microscope, they really aren't that great. Okay, like I think a lot of people, like me, like I, I, I love the idea of parties and stuff like that. I used to have people coming over to my house and, and I used to love that. Why? Because it's like I like a lively house, okay? But not every person that walked through my door obviously was somebody who was a well-wisher. Okay, so some people, they want to be the center of attention for whatever reason, okay? And I will tell you, I know people always resented me for having a lot of attention. But mind you, my attention was generated mainly because of the experiment. Okay, and when you do have the experience, when you do have a lot of attention on you, whether good or bad, eventually some of that's going to turn to bad, even if it all starts to good because people start nitpicking you and whatever. So, I mean, we can think and dream about all these wonderful things that we think that we want, but I will tell you there's always a negative side to it. Now, in my personal belief, okay, I personally think that the, the best level of or the highest level of quality that you could possibly get in this life is literally just sipping on that cup of coffee and not having to deal with too many people that's pretty much it okay because i understand like you know don't get me wrong money is important if you don't have it you don't have anything okay but we all know that money is not the answer to problems once you start upgrading or whatever you're going to have a whole new set of problems you're going to get people who are jealous of you people who are competitive of you your own family is trying to sit here applauding your death and everything else this is completely possible okay so then where do i find my inner strength my inner strength comes from my observance of what i've seen of the discontented being a discontented myself at times in my life um observing people reading about their situations just really just literally conducting what makes people unhappy and the level of discontentment that they're in and then also certain things that you can kind of classify and categorize people into these sort of sections people who have like strong addictions okay they're addicted because they're trying to pacify themselves they're trying to pacify themselves to maybe feel as though they need something to tie them over to get to whatever it is they want and sometimes when they really think about what they want they feel like there's too many obstacles to get to what they want and some of these obstacles, they don't know how to remove them because they're very complex. Like in my situation, you know, like um, my issue of work and family. Okay, that's something I don't believe in mixing. Okay, if you have the control over it. Okay, but in situations where a lot of people don't have control over their social environments, you know, and really they should. Okay, but unfortunately, a lot of times they don't. Okay, you've got people, you got your family sitting here conspiring against you, you got your friends conspiring against you. Nobody wishes you well. I mean, very, it's very, very difficult to find well wishers in this society. Okay, because why? Because the majority of people are discontented. So you're getting sucked into their unhappiness. And a, a lot of people say they're your friend, but they have a hard time really supporting their so called friends. Okay, so. The discontented is basically people who are unhappy, okay? And uh, I would say certain forms of abuse indicate that, and it makes it very hot, obvious, okay? Obviously, I would say alcoholics, drug addicts, people who are obese are generally not happy, okay? They're not. They're they're using something to to um, to fill that void. Okay, and the void, like I said, is generally created because they feel as though they, they have, everybody has an idea of what makes them happy. Some people feel barred or prevented from going after what makes them happy because of the, all these obstacles. Okay, and other people can be big obstacles to them. Okay, so basically, what it is is people who are miserable okay the discontented are people who are miserable okay and so um this upcoming video that i'm working on for patreon or my other channel too i will you know whatever however this works because i don't know everything right now i these people have let me in a tailspin okay and i'm referring to we know who we're talking about capricorn i don't need to talk about you know who it was but i i have been thinking about you a lot and this whole situation and i understand that certain people took it upon themselves to do that so i'm absolving you from any guilt from that issue okay i had to think it through but mind you it is what it is okay so i don't want to go too deeply into it but the reason why i feel this way is because you know um i didn't understand 
you know, for obviously the reason why this person was bullying me is because he was discontented. And, you know, the funny part is, you know, I have always looked at this person. Maybe he was not like somebody that I like, you know, bowed down to or whatever, but I did have a great level of respect for him. Why? Because he had, he sang beautifully. He sang beautifully and it was all imagery and flowery type, whatever, you know, that makes you conjure up in your mind, like how, you know, he sounded mystical and, and intriguing, okay? But I understand there's generally a difference between people's stage persona and how people really are, okay? And I'm, I'm old enough to understand that. The dude was an asshole, okay? But I also understand that this man was a very ignorant man. And this is one of the issues that I'm talking about, okay? Some of these people are, and I'm not saying like all of them, okay? But I do believe that a lot of these people, these celebrities, are kind of generating or working or have been exposed to or been a part of human trafficking rings their entire life. This is one of the reasons why he did the things that he did. You know, because he really does not have any sort of common sense. He has no sense of what's ethical, nor does it matter to him, okay? Nor does it matter to him because, <laughs> because he's an ignorant man. You know what I mean? And I, I met... A few of these people through um, things like Instagram and through the conversation and I'm just kind of like whoa wow you know and he was also not only was he ignorant he was obviously somebody who was dealing with being discontent because he did share a few things with me and I kind of figured he was discontent and whatever but you know it's unfortunate you know that all these years you know you think one thing and then you find out another and it's it's disappointing and quite frankly at this point I'm tired of dealing with disappointments. I dealt with disappointments when it came to the issue relating to my family. I, I dealt with disappointments when I came to find out that my life was some sort of weird uh, Truman show, okay? And then, you know, when you find out these people that you thought were cool when you were younger, you actually, I actually spent money on their merchandise, okay? To find out these, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if he was on pot fire, I wouldn't piss on him to put the fire out, okay? This is how sad it really is because you go from admiring, admiring somebody to just thinking, oh my God, what, what the heck? But anyway, to sum it up, I hope I explain what the discontented is. And I do believe that the discontented should be looked on at with some level of compassion. Why? Because we all know that everybody is subjected to this harsh reality of what we call life okay there's a lot of people who are disappointed there's a lot of things that happen beyond people's control there's a only there's a there's certain things that people gravitate because they're so hurt and so broken that they just they would get drunk and and wake up with a headache they're willing to do that just so they can have feel just a little bit of escape from the nightmare that they live in okay and that's not an exaggeration and i understand that this that where they're coming from is a level of pain Okay, and this is one of the reasons why they gravitate towards alcohol. This is the reason why they gravitate towards drugs. This is one of the reasons why, you know, these people want to eat a little too many ho-hos and ding-dongs. Okay, I fully get it. Okay, because, you know, I, I do believe that we're pleasure seekers. And the one thing that we're looking for is to try to, like, you know, give us something um, to, to lift up our mood. Okay, and people are get desperate. They get very desperate because they're not finding what it is that they're looking for and it's you know and some people are looking for things that may not even exist okay so it's all about learning how to be grateful and thankful for what you do have okay and then like make your goals simple you know um just be grateful you know what i mean i guess is all i'm really saying but a little bit more than that but you know anyway um yeah i do like to have contests for my for my channel um uh, right now the whole issue with me trying to, you know, sort through celebrities and stuff like that, it's too overwhelming for me, especially since I have to re-strategize everything, okay? And then also, um, I really don't feel comfortable on social media, mainly because, you know, you deal with icky, sticky type people, like, um, <laughs> okay, you know, you know how you, like, you, you want to make up names for people that you have, like, no respect for? <laughs> I think... I'm going to give Libra 14 a name like um, Degenerate Boy. Okay, Degenerate Boy. Him, people like that, I, I don't want to encounter. 
I, I'm tired of dealing with people who feel like, you know, they want to, like, you know, pull the wool over somebody's eyes or whatever. I'm just somebody who's trying to make a living. That's it. And I do feel as though he felt threatened by me as an individual for whatever reason. You know what I mean? And that's really not a good way of going into a friendship. I, I, I understand that. So, you know, um, I do want to have... Um, you know, contest and stuff like that. I do have one that's in my mind. It's been on it for quite a while, okay? But unfortunately, the issue that's going on right now with my Swan Song Manifesto channel is kind of causing a lot of stagnation beyond my control, all because of Degenerate Boy, <laughs> okay? Also known as AKA Lever 14. Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, I do want to do those things. And um, it's not the... Oh, I don't know. Maybe, see, the thing is, I get the feeling is that perhaps maybe when it comes to some of these um, celebrities, I feel as though they don't have any control over their life. Like, they're literally treated like circus cattle. Some of them are, okay? This is what I get from, like, my intuitive feelings, okay? And I could be exaggerating, but, you know, just, just because I'm telling you, Capricorn 9, like... Yeah, some of these people just come off as savage to me. Like, what the heck? You know, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Why would you say something or act like that? But whatever. You know, these people are ignorant. And some of these people, just like me, I was I was bred a certain way. Okay? And I think maybe, like I said, maybe he was bred a certain way. Very good looking man when he was younger. Great voice. You know what I mean? But like I said, like, no brain. No brain whatsoever. Okay, so, no, I don't need helpers. Okay? But what I do need is, like I said, you know, I need people to understand that um see the, the thing is it's like this group like you know um, degenerate boy and the people that he brought along with him they have zero concept of how things are supposed to be what's legal what's not legal and so this is the reason why they act the way they act okay um but no i don't need helpers you know what i mean but i i would like you know people to collaborate with at some point right now i'm at a point where you know i need to stand on my own two feet first and that way I get an understanding of how everything is kind of going, the, the progress and the flow of things. And then this is when uh, you, you get to a certain point where you can start incorporating other people because you start being able to afford them. You see what I'm saying? This is one of the reasons why I started off in October because I had a certain goal in mind to be at a certain place, okay? And so then we had Degenerate Boy who had other ideas, okay? So anyway, helpers should not be helping Unless, of course, it's consensual. If a helper wants to, um, is helping without your consent, they are not helpers. They're hindrances. Okay. So, um, one more sec. One second. Okay. And so since this video is about tea time, you know, I'm passing you a selection of different briskets to choose from. Mind you, I got these off the internet, so I'm being silly. Let's use your imagination, okay? I probably would go for the one on the lower hand, left hand side that looks like a checkerboard. So anyway, I get the message that, you know, people are starting to listen more to what it is, how I view things in life, okay? And I've never talked about, you know, um, politics or things like that uh, around people before, mainly because, you know, I always felt as though, um, I didn't want to get involved in that. And I had mentioned before in one of my videos, I don't know if I uploaded that video or not, but it was basically, you know, me explaining why when I talk about my worldviews or how, um, how I don't impose my views on other people, okay? But I do understand that I have rights as a United States citizen when it comes to like freedom of religion and um, the fact that my marital status and all of those things, I do feel as though, be me being after dealing with the experiment and stuff like that I even more gives me reason to um to feel the way that I do okay and it's based on my experience and my view of the world is based on my experience everybody's unique okay and so um you know like I said me not getting married is, is in no way 
of trying to, you know, uh, make a, a public statement. It mainly, I have always noticed that, you know, because of who I am, who I am, it is very difficult for me to be in living situations and I don't trust it. And I mean, you've, you heard my story before. I don't really see any point in, in going on into it, but I understand that there are certain things written in the law that protects people like myself. Okay. There are people who are abused. Okay. And if they looked at it from a legal perspective, they would say, Hey, you know, I have rights and I, I'm not hopeless. I'm not hopeless. Okay. Although they put you in situations where you can feel that way. Okay. But when you really, when you know that you have the right, okay. Like in this situation, I know that degenerate boy and I are never going to duke it out in court. Okay. But he should know when he should understand what a law is. Okay. A law is something that is written to protect you, prevent or protect you from something that is most likely to occur in nature. Okay. So like, hate to say it, but crime, people stealing stuff is natural. People want something, they're going to take it. Right. But we also have this form of civilized like instruction on people who do those things. If you do that, you're going to get punished. And it also protects other people from things like theft. Okay. So they know that if somebody gets, somebody steals something, according to what the law says, they, they deserve justice. Now, whether they're able to get it through the legal system or not, that that's the end of the deal. Why? Because that was written into law for the purpose of preventing something negative from happening. It's so important that to prevent that, whatever that thing is from happening, that they decided to write it into law because it's either threatening to a person's life or someone else's life. Okay. So when it comes to dealing with how to solve an argument, you know what I mean? Which I'm going to be talking about responses for people. Like, cause sometimes people are, are doing things in their life and they deal with int outside intrusion and this outside intrusion is causing them a lot of problems. Okay. So I'm giving a, I'm like creating some responses to what people can say to people who are putting them in tight spots and basically trying to choke the life out of them. Present this to them in, from a legal perspective, okay? And then when you, when you do, let them know that, you know, if they continue to pursue this any further, that you have right to take legal action, period. If it comes down to that, okay? Everybody should know at this point, because people watch my videos, okay? That laws are written for this reason, okay? And if you try thinking that you can skirt around it, there's a rule, okay? Think of laws as rules. There's a rule that says you're not supposed to. And the reason why is because it causes damage all the way down the line, okay? So when it, that's my, I would say the legal system is in a way incorporated. It's not my philosophy, but it is incorporated in my, in my, in my view, my point, my viewpoint. Basically, you know, I pretty much mind my own business. I'm not a hell raiser by any means. Okay. But if I stay within the guidelines of the law, you know what I mean? Like I can go outside at night. Okay. If I want to go outside at night, enjoy some moonlight, or I want to do this, then that's fine. But if there's a curfew that says everybody has to be in at 10 o'clock, then I have to be in at 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? And somebody can't really sit here and call the cops on me because they see me, you know, standing outside my house or whatever. I mean, I think some people have used, um, uh, some people don't understand what is legal and what is not legal. Now we're not, this is kind of getting off the subject of my philosophy, but I basically feel as though, you know, I'm a unique person. Um, based on experience, meaning like, you know, I have, I have de dealt with being in situations that really I shouldn't have been in. Okay. I should not have been in this experiment. Right. And because of it, you know, I had nothing, no other choice, but to adapt for my own protection, for my own safety. Right. So, which is going to be out of the norm is I'm going to, my life is going to be different than, you know, uh, maybe for example, we'll take a woman who's my age. Okay who uh, quote unquote does what society does. Okay. She's already married. She chances are she probably has a grandchild by now. Okay. She participates in like, you know, social clubs. She might be a, what do you call it? A, a, a member of something, whatever. She, she, she joined the PTA. She, she lives the, you know, the ideal life of a conservative person, whatever. Okay. But here's my situation. I was set up in a situation that was fucked up. I'm sorry, but it was messed up from the, from the get go. Okay. So my only way is to survive is to adapt to that. 
You know what I mean? So obviously I'm not going to sit here and trust everybody that comes into my life. I have no reason to trust anybody that comes into my life. I have a completely different life just because of the circumstances of which I was born, right? And of course my philosophy, my viewpoints are going to be based on the experience of, like I've seen sides of people that you have never seen before. Okay. I've seen people be fucking evil. Okay. And people are evil. Okay, when you get down to it, which is one of the reasons why we have laws. Okay, that, that's the reason why. Okay, because it's to, it's to actually make, uh, bring civilization or make people civil. That's what civil is, okay? To be able, you know, to kind of quell, to be, you know, at least polite, kind of keep it moving, whatever. You know what I mean? You don't want to be, you know, the raw human nature, kind of tap it down. Okay, because we do have laws. We have things to protect us. Okay, and that's what it is. So my views um, don't get talked about much because, you know, like I always figured, because I, somebody who works and lives within the guidelines of the law, I never thought my lifestyle was ever going to get questioned. I just only realized that I was being kind of people were honing in on me when I started realizing that it was undeniable that I was a targeted individual. Okay. And then of course, everything that I did was picked apart. Okay. And the very same people who were chasing after me were the people who made it so that I have to sit here and duck dodge and avoid people. See, they, they, they want it. They want you to get married. But the reason why I don't want to get married is because I don't want to be married to somebody who's like that. Okay, because I know what abuse is and they may not see what they do as abuse, but I understand what abuse is. I understand I'm the recipient of their thoughtless action. I understand that I would be somebody who would suffer in a situation like that. Okay. And so, you know, hey, I was basically just saying, you know, I, I don't want it. I don't want people like playing matchmaker with me and I don't want to deal with people who like, you know, who, who see things different. Like obviously we're talking about certain people. Okay. And I'm not going to mention who, but I think he kind of knew who I'm talking about, who kind of encouraged this whole thing along. But you know, he has a view of maybe women being in the kitchen and the bedroom and that's pretty much all they have. Okay. And they don't see this. Okay. But he, he should have understood. And if he, if he did know that I was a woman who was in this program, who was any, any, in a, in a experiment that was literally meant to destroy me and he continued to do what he did. Well then, you know what? He's an asshole and he doesn't have any favor in my book or whatever. Okay. But if he did this out of ignorance, some people, they don't think about this. So a lot of men want, want, think that, you know, you're, you're taking care of yourself and yet mean that means in their mind that you want a man and blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 right? And so they, they get upset and pissed off because this woman is basically just trying to get on with her life. She's trying to get on with her pain that she had to deal with. And she's only gravitating and, and, and hanging on to the things that she still cares about. Because God knows everything else that she had in her life has been destroyed. Her family, the people that she knew, her brothers and sisters, they there ain't anybody to her. As a matter of fact, that was all a setup. People that she used to know as friends, they're gone, okay? The only person she has is herself. So she's only going to hang on and love herself. And that's the best thing for her to do. Because really, she can't trust anybody else at that point. So anyway, moving on to the next thing. I do understand that um, I, I did help free a lot of people. Um, I know that there was a lot of things that were going on. And a lot of people, they put together these business ideas, okay? And they think that um, they, don't, they don't think about the needs of other people. You know, one of the things that the work environment... One of the things I think um, I noticed when I was dealing with, you know, the nine to five is a lot, there's a lot of workplace violations. There really are. But when I think about, you know, I had mentioned some of these celebrities that I spoke to, some of these people are, are sadly, um, sadly misled. You know what I mean? And because maybe they have, may have been grew, grew up in the industry their entire life, they don't know, they're not aware of, the injustices that are actually happening to them. Okay. So, um, this is one of the reasons I personally think the reason why I'm going to tell you what degenerate boy kind of reminds me of somebody who he's not any more higher up on the level than like a, a raw animal and to me. He's just, like I said, he, he seems savage to me, you know? Right? So, um, but if I was able to release these people, like some of these people from this bond 
that was literally destroying their life, then I think that's wonderful. Okay, so where do they go from here? You know, I would like to help them and I'll make some videos on encouraging these people as much as I possibly can. But the thing is, that's what people want. Okay, it is no fair for people to work in a manner that is extremely demoralizing to them. And I'm sure a lot of people have the disappointment. Just like the 9 to 5, you know, people visualize their contentment in the 9 to 5. People visualize their contentment in just about every career they, have, they chose. Just the same thing with celebrities. And there's always something. We always think our happiness is outside of ourselves, but in reality, it really isn't. <laughs> it really isn't. But I'm very glad that some people got Read, you know so anyway my goal right now Capricorn 9 is I really do only want to focus on spiritual stuff you know this is what I'm all about and I just been noticing that I talk entirely too much about degenerate boy I talk entirely too much about you know the the human trafficking I talk entirely too because it is pretty much the only thought that they left me with okay meaning like the only experiences that I have with people have all been negative I have not had anything decent in my life in a very long time, okay? And if I did have it in my life, I have to question it because it could have been a perp. You, you see how this experiment was very damaging to our human psyche. It was extremely damaging to our human being, okay? And so um, it does shock me that something like this could have been enacted out, okay? Um, regardless, okay? But I'm moving on, okay? So my thing is... To talk more about spirituality and of course Maria's gonna Maria's goal in life at this point is to basically get more in touch on her spiritual side as if I could I mean because really Maria is all about spirituality okay but I'm gonna be talking more about reincarnation universal law um, vessels magic all of that stuff and that's pretty much all I want to talk about I'm tired of retracting and talking about this person, that person, this person, that person, this person. It's too much, you know what I mean? It's too much. And um, But it, it, I will say that the, because I have to walk around in life feeling so negatively about people, it is, it's not a good thing. It is not a good thing. Like, you know, I need to care about some people in life, okay? So it's better that I not know people that closely. You know, that's just how it is. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to say was... Um, my political view, view beliefs are pretty much in line with my my life my my life so philosophy. I'm sorry, so it's not something that I've ever felt like I needed to talk about. But I did t discuss it recently on one of my videos about how I view things and my view of things, and um, this is how I choose to live my life. Now I don't try to enforce it on anyone else, but I do believe that I was being bullied because of it. You know what I mean? Here in the United States, which blew me away. Okay. I am in no way a threat to my country. Never. Okay. I have, I would never sit here and like disrespect my country. I would never even like burn a United States flag. Okay. I do understand. I, I'm probably the only person here in the United States who still respects flag etiquette. Okay. Seriously. I would, I am not a threat to the United States. Okay. But what I was a threat to is maybe somebody's ignorance thinking that it was okay to do these sort of things. Okay. And that's, you know, by me standing up and saying, Okay, you don't force a woman to be with a guy. You don't allow a man to come into a woman's business without her consent. You don't do this. Some of these things are based off of tradition. It, maybe this is what they did when he was younger. Okay, you know who I'm talking about. Or maybe this is something that was normal to them. Okay, but this is what I'm saying about understanding what is maybe your own home tradition and how it affects somebody else, okay? And when you're dealing with, you know, of course, people who are in positions of power, they need to be able to understand how to work with other people, okay? And, and make decisions that's for the overall good. And in reality, he shouldn't have been involved in the first place. So, um, but yeah, those are my political beliefs. You know, um, I think that people should live to the best of their ability, and that's pretty much all I am. I do realize that I have missed out a lot in life, okay? Like a lot, and I'm completely aware of it, all right? But my drive is mainly because I am all I have. I am all I have, okay? And I know some people think it's okay. I am not the kind of person who believes in being a burden to anyone, okay? That's me. That's my personal belief, okay? Um, I don't believe that. I try to put myself in other people's shoes. You know, my son is 30 years old and I appreciate everything that he's doing for me. I can't tell you how much I do, okay? But as somebody who has been young at one time, okay? And I'm not saying that I'm like old, but I get it, okay? As I feel as though I would be much happier if my son was living his life, okay? His life, 
Okay, not with responsibilities and being tied down to to his mother, who uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that he helps me out, mind you. But the thing is, is that, you know, um, he's not responsible for me being in an experiment. He's not the one, he's not responsible for me being in an experiment. Okay, so, but why should he pay the price for that? You see what I'm saying? It's like, I, I think if you, if you love your family or you love somebody, you want them to live their best life, okay? And it's because I am a mother that makes me sad to see my son having to take care of me, okay? And, and I don't, maybe a lot of people don't understand that, but because I understand what it's like to basically be, you know, constricted, confined to say situations that were not really to my liking, okay, because of that compassion that I have, I understand I don't want that for my son, right? I don't, okay? So I know good and well that I have somebody who can take care of themselves. I'm, I'm willing to do it, okay? I want to do it. That's all. I don't feel as though I could be happy or content or even live with myself or look at myself in the mirror if I'm not somebody who's self-sufficient. That's me. That's me. That's just how it is, okay? And because I know I am not, I'm in a situation where I cannot trust other people. All I have is me. That's it. And I was aware of it throughout the entire time when I left the, the farmer's place, when I was getting bullied here, when I was being, uh, what do you call it, gaslit there, when I was, you know, being mobbed at every place I went, when I was being set up for fake job interviews. See, this is one of the reasons why, you know, why this is such a crime, okay? Um, hang on. Uh, okay, I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally like, you know, shut off the recorder, but that, that's it. That's it. Okay. It is me about, about me. It's not in any way being defiant. It's about being realistic. The thing is, is that I am a woman who was, you know, basically thrown into an experiment and now this is the end result. Now I, I have no support system. Okay. I don't have a family to go fall back on. I don't have any fucking friends to fall back on. I don't have anyone. Okay. So what does Maria do? Okay, and I understand maybe this this whole thing was, oh, you know, C.B. Braganza, he took his own life. Well, guess what? I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Okay, and I understand he was 95 years old when he when he did that. Okay, to me, I'm like 53 years old. That's, I'm too young. Okay, and besides, you know what I mean? It's worth living for. It's worth a try. So, I don't have any other choice. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and put myself in the position of being abused. Men would love to abuse me. They really would. You know, if there's, there are some men who are so sick. I'm going to tell you what. There are some men who are so sick. If they had the ability to, they would have me chained down in some basement or whatever. That's how I've, I've, I've come to understand the mentality of people. And that sort of hatred that I felt from people like Degenerate Boy, that's exactly how, the kind of vibe I got from him. And whether he felt that way or not, what I did feel from him was wickedness, okay? And so, therefore, I'm trying to remove myself from having to deal with those sort of situations, which is a, a, a logical, and it's a no-brainer. Like, I, I shouldn't even have to explain myself. So, I'm going to wrap up this video. You know, I hope you enjoyed having this tea with me. You know, you might want to take a couple crumpets, you know, on your way home. <laughs> I'm going to wrap up this video. I'll be back with another video sometime later. Take care. Bye-bye.